day. Welcome. My name is Sadia Sheikh and I'm an associate professor in the Department for the Study of Religions at the University of Cape Town. Um, it is my pleasure to walk you through this short presentation on the nature of the study of religion in an academic space at our university. So let's begin. Why is it important to study religion? Let me begin by referring you to a study conducted in 2010. This very ambitious study uh, surveyed 230 countries in the world and found that 84% of the world population identified with a specific religious group. Now, in light of these demographics, it becomes impossible to be an aware and informed citizen of the world, uh, of a pluralistic society and a pluralistic world, without an understanding of religion. So what is the approach to the study of religion in our department? Perhaps it's helpful to start by telling you what we don't do. We don't train people to become religious practitioners or religious leaders. This is not a space to train to be an imam or a priest or a rabbi. Rather, in our department, we approach religion in a non-confessional academic manner. We are aware that people bring enormous biases to the study of religion and we attempt to limit these inherent biases so that we can attempt to study religion as a complex and powerful social phenomenon that intersects with other social and political forces. So if we were to look at our society and a variety of different cultures, we see that religion continues to be a source of inspiration, a source of conflict, a source of meaning making in a variety of ways. We see poets and politicians and musicians. Perhaps a helpful way to think about religion is to think about religion as meaning making systems. David Chilister says to suggest to us that the study of religion encompasses the entire range of what it means to be a human being in relation to the transcendent, the sacred, or the ultimate concerns of human life. And he suggests to us that if we can think about religion critically and carefully, we can learn to think about anything in that manner. And so the questions that we are concerned with is how does what we assume to be religion shape our experiences and understandings of reality, of existence, of life, of sociality, of how we live with others, of community, um, and of living and of dying. So religion as a meaning-making system encompasses some of the most fundamental questions of being human and of being alive. Some of the questions that religion helps us to think through and think with is why is there something when it's possible for there to be nothing in existence? What is the true meaning of life? What does it mean to be a human being? What happens to us after death? How do we explain human suffering and injustices? These are some of the deep fundamental existential questions that religions in a variety of ways attempt to answer. Moreover, religion also includes a focus on everyday lived embodied practices. Religion is about particular institutions, communal institutions. It's about particular forms of ritual it's about the organization of home and domestic life. It impacts particular forms of social order and social orientation. Religions also serve often to legitimate particular kinds of power structures. Um, there are rules of behavior and codes of behavior that religion enable within people's everyday communal lives. In addition to sociality and the exterior life, religion is also deeply about an account of one's internal world. Believers and people of faith have a variety of personal private experiences which involve amongst other things an experience of the sacred, a way to encounter the spirit or the divine or the ultimate source of reality. Often these are described through notions of mysticism, some form of transcendence, of a union with something greater than oneself. Um, and faith communities often have shared and unifying narratives uh, around the interior life, which are very significant within religious traditions. So given the ways in which religion permeates both personal and social realms, it becomes important to understand the role that religion plays in the construction of human subjectivity and the way it weaves through a whole variety and host of other areas of human life, like literature, politics, economics, family, arts, 
and broader cultural forms. To understand any of those, one needs to be thinking about religion thoughtfully and critically. So taking courses in the study of religion not only gives you a nuanced and sophisticated understanding of society and human beings, it also allows you to think critically, to listen empathically, and hopefully to write clearly. Uh, we are located in Africa and give great attention to our location, but we are also sensitive to the global interconnections and think about the world as an increasingly globalized space. You will be deeply empowered uh, as a social science and a humanities student through the study of religion to be genuinely thinking about what it means to be a global citizen. The study of religion can be combined with a number of other majors, including African studies, sociology, anthropology, film and media studies, political studies, language and literature, psychology, fine arts, and gender studies. Um, in all of these fields, an understanding of religion deeply enhances and enriches the study of these related disciplines. We would argue that majoring in religion provides an excellent training for careers in law, in teaching, in counseling, in diplomacy, journalism, social services, um, politics, medicine and the arts, and even enables people that are becoming religious professionals to think more critically about their location in a interreligious world and in a diverse and pluralistic society. So in a three year major that we offer in our department, in the first year, students are introduced to a variety of religious traditions historically and geographically, and we focus on key themes and components in a variety of traditions, and students are offered a comparative perspective to be thinking about Judaism, Christianity, Islam, African traditional religion, Chinese religion, Japanese religion, and other Asian traditions as well. In the second year, we have a religion and society course which adopts a sociology of religion approach, we have a course that focuses on psychology of religion. Uh, then we have a third course that looks at religion, sexuality and gender in a variety of religious traditions comparatively. And finally, we offer a course of religions in Africa, which includes Christianity, African traditional religion and Islam. In our final year or third year, we offer a course in religion and politics and another one in religion and media. And that provides you with a very solid basis to be thinking about religion, society, and human beings in ways that we think are deeply meaningful and enriching to the study of the social sciences and humanities. I thank you for your patience. This is a session we have a couple of minutes for me to take your questions either in the chat or live. Um, so here we are. I'm here and my colleague, uh, Professor, Associate Professor Elisabetta Cook, who is also here. Uh, the one thing that I would like to very quickly clarify before I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment, uh, but we are two separate departments. We've just presented the first half of this. Uh, as the Department for the Study of Religions. And the department that's following us is a separate department, the Department of Philosophy. But we have a few minutes before we switch to Tom uh, in the Department of Philosophy to take any questions. So if people have questions, please uh, pop them in the chat or 
uh, and I'm happy to take them. If we don't have any questions that come up, I can then hand over to, to Tom in a few minutes. But I will give you a chance to just write in your um, write in your questions into the chat. Um, Olga, I'm not sure if people can unmute and ask questions. I simply want to add that the Department of Religious Studies, uh, we have a, you know, a variety of specialists that range from Islamic studies to Jewish philosophy to African traditional religions. It's a comparative department. Uh, it's non-confessional. It's a space for people to be engaging religion as a complex social phenomenon um, and to be thinking about it with a level of uh, at least the, the, the idea of a Department of Religious Studies is very different from some of the theological schools uh, and from the ways in which people get trained. So one of the, the, the misconceptions people often have is that a Department of Religious Studies or the Department of the Study of Religion at least um, is, is coming from a theological basis and that's not what the academic space does. Now, I think it's time for us to hand over to Tom. I don't see any questions. We have a website and you're well, very welcome to look at the Department for the Study of Religions website, and we look forward to welcoming you to a very, uh, to a very engaged department who has, uh, who have some wonderful lecturers and great students, and hopefully some enriching conversations for first years. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Uh, Tom, I think Olga, we can we can move on to the Department of Philosophy. Okay, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming, and um, welcome to the Department of Philosophy. We're a uh, relatively uh, small department, about eight people, and we're hiring a, a new member of staff this year. Uh, we are a relatively young department, and we cover all areas of philosophy that are in the traditional Anglophone English speaking curriculum. Um, but let me um, ask, what is philosophy? I think we're here to perhaps find that out because philosophy is not a well-known um, subject in, in the wider world. Philosophy is not often taught at school, sometimes is, but not often. Um, and so I think the main issue I want to explore today is what is philosophy and what are some philosophical questions we could um, go about asking? Well, it's very difficult to come to a clear, crisp definition of what philosophy is. But I think one way of tackling that question is the following. That philosophy asks what we could call foundational questions. That is questions which are underlying all the other disciplines, questions which are relevant to all the other disciplines. Um, but which those disciplines don't often themselves ask. Um, so for instance, um, if you go to the Department of History, you'll uh, look at various figures and uh, events in the past. But a uh, historian doesn't often ask, well, what is an event exactly? How do we define an event and how do we distinguish it from other things? Uh, what um, you might study in Department of Art is the history of art. You might look at various painters, um, their technique, um, etc. But what people in the art department or um, the history of art department would not often ask is how do we distinguish art from other things? How do we define art? What uh, is an aesthetic property? What is an aesthetic value? Um, do the arts have an objective value? Can we make objective judgments about the value of a painting, for instance? Those kind of very important foundational questions uh, should be asked um, all over the curriculum and philosophy is there to try and answer them. In a sense, they're questions it's very easy to ask, but very difficult actually uh, to supply an answer to. One of the things that philosophy supplies you with when you study it is a set of technical tools to go about answering those kinds of very important foundational questions. It supplies you with, <clears throat> if you like, um, a technical toolbox, a complex series of complex repertoire of um, 
uh, means to answering those questions. Now, another thing to say about philosophy is that it comes in a variety of uh, sub disciplines or, or branches, we could say. So when you do philosophy, you'll, you'll study not philosophy as such, but a particular kind of philosophical theme or topic. Let me just run through some of those. So, for instance, um, logic is a very important part of philosophy. And if you do philosophy, I advise you to I strongly advise you to take some logic because that will help you look at how arguments are structured, how arguments are built um, and what makes for a good and a bad type of argument. So logic is one key branch of philosophy. Another example of a branch of philosophy would be epistemology, as it's called. That is the study of knowledge and what um, knowledge uh, might be, how we could define knowledge, how we could distinguish it from belief, say, or other kinds of cognitive attitude. So again, it sounds uh, uh, relatively straightforward, the kinds of question we could ask, but actually answering those questions, as we'll see, is very uh, complex and difficult. Another area of philosophy at the value end of philosophy, we could say, is ethics and political theory. And those are parts of the uh, subject that I teach. In those subjects, we don't ask how the world is, how the world is actually, but how the world should be. So it's a value question. We want to discover how things ought to be rather than how they might be um, as things stand. So, as I said, philosophy is a, a wide uh, discipline, it includes many branches, and you will choose when you do philosophy uh, among them. You'll have a menu, if you like, uh, of different topics, uh, different sub disciplines. So, just to um, get a flavour of what the discipline is like, what I want to do is look at uh, one or two questions that are central to the philosophy curriculum and see what you make of them. Um, perhaps we could start with uh, a question in what's called the philosophy of mind, the philosophy of mind. Now, I take it that everybody has uh, a mind, at least everybody who's listening to this uh, uh, presentation. Indeed, I hope that everybody has a mind who's listening to this presentation, otherwise it's probably quite difficult uh, to understand. But I want to ask a slightly different question, not what the mind does, but where the mind is. Where is the mind? If you have a mind, I take it that the mind is somewhere. But could anyone suggest an answer to that question. So you have one question that asks, hi, are you able to branch off into an LLB from philosophy? It depends what you mean by branch off. Um, I think that um, you can certainly do philosophy uh, together with law as, say, a minor or perhaps two majors. Um, I'm not sure of the details there, but it's certainly always possible to combine philosophy with other subjects. Um, and I'm pretty sure sure many people do that with law. And in fact, law is a very popular um, career to go into after philosophy. But if you if you check the handbook, uh, it will give you the details there. Um, do I have any takers for the question that I just asked? Where is the mind? The mind is wherever you want it to be, says somebody. Ah, in the brain is another answer. Um, good, uh, interesting answer. Our minds are made up just as much by the people and tools around us as they are by the brain cells inside our skull. Well, interesting uh, answer there. Let me just, um, before we end up, ask um, the person who said it's in the brain, or maybe perhaps it is the brain. That's a, a, an answer that some philosophers have given. They're called identity theorists, that the mind is the same as the brain. But one problem with that answer is that the um, brain seems to be a physical object which we could cut up and uh, dissect in a lab, for instance. Um, but can you dissect or 
bisect or cut up the mind. A lot of philosophers have argued that uh, the mind cannot be the same thing as the brain because you can't subject it to kind of physical investigation. It's not a physical kind of thing. And one of the ma main uh, proponents of that was um, a philosopher called Descartes who argued that the mind has to be a non-physical thing. It uh, has to be a non-material thing in order to exist because the brain cannot be the same thing as the mind. A um, couple more answers. Your mind could be in your mind's eye and your perception of consciousness. Ah, so consciousness is a very important topic in philosophy. What is consciousness? How does it relate to our physical uh, uh, bodily being? Uh, that relation is uh, extremely complex and difficult to work out. Uh, but I'm very glad you're making these suggestions. The brain may be where our higher thoughts of reasoning are. Yes. But where are those? If the brain um, contains our thoughts, can we point to those thoughts? When we uh, study the neuro neurophysics of the brain, for instance, we have a scan of the brain. Can you point to a thought? Uh, a lot of people think that's impossible. Um, where is the content of the thought in the brain? Is it just a neuron firing? How do we know that? How do we know that neuron firing is the same thing as a thought? Um, somebody asked me um, a different kind of question, which perhaps I should fit, finish on. Thank you so much for your answers to that question. What jobs can you apply for with philosophy? Any uh, job uh, uh, and every job is the answer. Um, you can go into media, you can go into government, you can go into education, you can go into business. None of those careers is closed to you. Philosophy is not a professional discipline in the sense that it prepares you for one thing like engineering, or medicine or law. You can go into many things and that's one of the great advantages of it. In fact, statistically, philosophers among the art subjects have one of the highest success rates in the job market. Um, it's not often known that, uh, but there's very, uh, it's a very good art subject to have for your career prospects. So maybe I can uh, finish up on that note. Uh, hopefully I'll see uh, many of you in first year philosophy. Do encourage you to apply. Uh, I teach first year ethics, so I hope to see you in ethics, whether online or face-to-face, uh, -face, hopefully, um, next year. So um, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you so much for your answers to that uh, conundrum, is the mind, what, where is the mind? I leave it to you to think about further. It's a very interesting question. Um, and do look at the video that my colleague Elisa sent uh, and which um, I published earlier. Okay, perhaps we can finish up there.